Morena, Etefano. Welcome to day 29. Uh, that is, we're one day away uh, from day 30, so I'm not sure if you're feeling successful and as though we've achieved something uh, as a country as Aotearoa New Zealand, but I definitely feel that we do. Uh, with nearly 30 days under alert level 4 lockdown of our nationwide rahui uh, to eliminate COVID-19. Uh, it is, of course, Thursday the 23rd of April, and I'm coming to you this morning with some big news um, that you might have missed if you aren't uh, subscribed to Google Alerts for uh, any kind of climate change related news. Uh, Morena Paul and to Frederick, uh, thank you guys. And to Pearl, uh, Morena Pearl, haven't seen you for a while. Um, which you may have missed if you're not signed up to Google Alerts for uh, climate change related news or you don't have, you know, the New Zealand Greens or uh, James Shaw or Minister of Climate Change or any of those things on there. Yesterday, of course, was... Um, not necessarily, of course, I'm not sure who follows this kind of stuff unless you're uh, deep green, uh, but yesterday was 50 years of the annual celebration of Earth Day. Uh, and Earth Day is, of course, kind of just an annual marker of the importance of all of us uh, doing our bit and making sure that we are respectful of Papatua Nuku, of our Earth. Uh, I think that we often talk about climate change in a really perverse way. We talk about as though we have to save uh, the planet. The thing is that when you actually look at the science of climate change and you look at uh, climate change in the past, uh, the planet has always ultimately recovered. The problem is that we are ruining the environment and the climate that is required for all of us to survive, let alone thrive. Uh, so actually we need to be talking about the remainder um, and the restoration uh, of civilization as we know it, actually, when we're talking about climate change. But the big news is, uh, and I will link the story um, in the comments below, uh, that James Shaw, our Green Minister for Climate Change, uh, has written, uh, communicated with the Independent Climate Change Commission uh, and asked them to recommend to the government any potential changes to what is called the Nationally Determined Contribution or the NDC under our Paris Climate Agreement uh, in order to ensure that New Zealand is meaningfully contributing to the world goal of keeping below 1.5 degrees of warming. That is really, really important. <laughs> Not the least because I think what you're starting to see, particularly from a number of quite conservative commentators, uh, is that we are going to have to do things like uh, hold back on or stop um, you know, environmental protections or labour protections uh, when we are thinking about so-called restarting the economy. The thing is, uh, as most people um, in these yarns that we've been having every morning have recognised, but uh, also in a huge swathe of commentary that I've been privy to, uh, normal wasn't working for many people at all. Uh, and, you know, in the words of Iona Holstead, the Secretary of Education, which I can't help but consistently echo, uh, this pandemic didn't create inequity, it simply exposed it. And we have the opportunity to completely reorient the way that our political instruments currently operate in order to uh, ensure that all of us are living better lives on the other side of this. Uh, so there's a few um, questions coming through here. Uh, Tracy, this is uh, remains to actually, I, I've changed the artwork, but I haven't actually changed the artist. Um, so I had this, for those of you who have been watching these for a while, this is Gina Keel. Uh, this is a Gina Keel piece uh, that she did for the Teske Brothers when they were in town for their gig at the power station. Uh, don't we remember gigs? Uh, don't we all miss gigs uh, and live music? Uh, I'm really stoked with the amount of innovation that's been going on um, inside of the creative sector and the amount of musicians. Um, shout out to me mate Marlon Williams, uh, who's been doing stuff live on Instagram, along with a number of other musicians, uh, to try and bring people a semblance of what live music was like. Uh, I'd also note Tom Scott. If ever Avantdale uh, Bowling Club has just released a new record of uh, that was recorded live actually at the power station as well. Um, remember folks to support local music on that. 
point, um, I'd have actually been planning for a while to bring together a playlist of uh, local musicians uh, so that we can all remember to support them. Uh, so on, on that point, if anybody has any recommendations for um, local music produced uh, and recorded with local musicians from Aotearoa New Zealand, uh, drop them in the comments below because I am curating a bit of a playlist which will release this weekend. Um, but back to the point around uh, the climate and around these nationally determined contributions. Um, if anybody here has been following our climate policy for any period of time, uh, you will probably be aware of how jargon-filled it is, how difficult it is to actually get into this subject, let alone to explain it to anybody else. And the problem with that is that we have created something that is so critical for the sustenance and sustaining of life uh, that has become so academic, so ivory tower, so far removed from the day-to-day -day reality that so many people live, that it just seems as though it's inconsequential, but it's really not. It is fundamental to all of us continuing um, to live life with any semblance of how we know it. Let alone our farmers and those who work in horticulture, agriculture, etc., continuing to produce the kai uh, that we need. So, you know, what we need to remember here is how critical it is that we stay on track and that we keep warming below 1.5 degrees uh, and to ignore all of those folks who are saying that we can just ignore the science uh, of climate change uh, and requiring that we limit those warming activities. Uh, Hazel's asking about James's interview with Paul Henry last night, um, go forward uh, uh, in our response with COVID and what we invest in rather than going back. Um, Totoka that big time folks. Um, you have got Parliament um, coming back next week and I spoke about this on the uh, live stream yesterday but what happens right um, and you're starting to see a semblance of this kind of trickling through in mainstream media reporting is that high speed metabolism of what's the latest political tactic starting to drum back up again. And I'm really worried that that starts to take precedence over the more substantive values led conversations we have been having about the kind of policies that we want to implement moving forward. Because what this pandemic has taught us more than anything is that all of the stuff that we were once told was politically possible, whether it's housing the home homeless or enabling people with disabilities or who are parents to work from home if that is the context with which they're operating uh, or to increase benefit levels. Uh, all of that stuff that we were told was politically impossible, was actually just a matter of willpower. Uh, and this pandemic has demonstrated that we can orient those tools of government and of the parliament to do what is right uh, when it is urgent. So when you remove those urgent circumstances and we are tackling something like uh, global warming or climate change, which looks so far out into the future, but actually requires action today, it's important to recognise that, that parliaments across the world have demonstrated their capacity to grapple with existential crises and to organise their policies and spending according to that. So we can do exactly that on the other side of this pandemic. We can invest in things that will reduce our emissions. Speaking to, as we were discussing yesterday, things like, um, you know, the oil crash, uh, you know, we wouldn't be impacted or affected by this. Nobody would be had, again, we oriented uh, investment of governments around the world in renewables. And then we would be entirely free and independent of a reliance on fossil fuels, which is entirely exposed to fluctuations in supply and demand. Uh, and all of us would have far greater, freer, more convenient and affordable access to renewable energy that could be not only not extracted, but continually, perpetually, infinitely reduced without any damage to our environment at all. Um, we can invest in all of this stuff, guys. It's the kind of conversations that I've been having with people around stuff like rail, for example. People saying, oh, it's impossible that we'll ever have rail because we don't have any functional rail um, across the country at present. But what that demonstrates is that we simply haven't invested in it in the past. We haven't prioritised it in the past. In fact, we've actually prioritised uh, roading to such an extent that there is no alternatives for the average New Zealander looking to navigate around the country. 
Uh, in fact, the overemphasis on roading projects over alternative non-congested networks such as trains or um, public transport has in fact meant that in places like Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, of my home, that there are 800 new cars on Auckland roads every single week because if people want to get around, that is the only option available to them. You know, it, it unintentionally has the consequence of continuing to reinforce and require that people engage in getting a car to get around. Uh, so if we want to produce those alternatives, if you build it, they will come. Um, uh, Murdoch is asking about um, <laughs> Na Iwi Radio um, having a kōrero. Um After this broadcast, unfortunately not iho, um, I have to go onto my regular morning call and then I've got Environment Select Committee, hence why I'm um, wearing my button down. Um, We've got, yeah, Tracy, um, Gina is fantastic, um, but Gina is not, this is just the art that I have available to me um, in the Wellington flat that I stay in when I'm in Wellington where I've been quarantined and then got stuck during the Alert Level 4 lockdown. Uh, at home in Auckland, I have far more uh, fantastic uh, artwork from a wide range of New Zealand artists. We've got so many incredible New Zealand artists uh, that are all across the country. Um, on Instagram I did a display of a bunch of them uh, on that I've now saved as a highlight I don't know if, if you know how to navigate that but long story short support local artists um, Flynn missing gigs oh big time so am I uh, Owen do you think foreign workers on work visas who've been working tirelessly through level four could be put forward for early permanent resident visas um, uh, Owen, th that's something which I think is uh, deserving of greater conversation. Um, I'm one of those uh, probably quite rare politicians and that I'm not willing to just randomly leap in with a reckon on something that I haven't thought that much about and that I don't have more wraparound context or information with. Um, so I will refer that to my colleague Jane Logie uh, and Gauris Gutterman, um, who both respectively hold the Labour and the immigration portfolios. Uh, Morena Jane, uh, Frederick is asking about watching Breaking Bad. Um, Melted Ice Cream did a great uh, weekend live stream. Yes, they did, Paul. Uh, long live, uh, long hype, Littleton. Um, uh, Nat and Jono are a tight folk duo from Christchurch. Uh, Marlon and Williams played on the Mick. Um, <laughs> uh, conservatives in New Zealand denying climate change altogether like in America. That's from Caleb. Uh, kia ora, Caleb. Um, no, we don't have quite the same situation with people ignoring climate change. In fact, we've moved on to what James Shaw, our co-leader and the uh, Green Minister for Climate Change, characterises, I think, quite aptly as uh, the second stage of climate denialism. We have actively won the discussion around the fact that climate science is here. Um, you know, if you want to deny climate science, why aren't you just denying gravity? It doesn't matter what you think, facts don't care about your feelings, this is happening. Uh, it's, it's physics <laughs> and it well outpaces any politics. So we actually do um, here have cross-partisan support for legislation called the Zero Carbon Bill, which sets up the framework for the Independent Climate Commission to provide advice to governments of the day. I advocated for it to have a far more binding uh, impact on the Environment Select Committee, but unfortunately we lost that battle, uh, politics being what it is. Uh, but nonetheless, that idea has been socialised. Uh, so we do have cross-party, cross-parliament consensus that uh, global warming exists. Uh, however, the challenge is some people thinking that global warming, that climate change is just going to wait until we get everything else in order, um, as opposed to recognising that actually, you know, if we aren't dealing with the existential crises that is the increasing exponential warming of the planet, uh, then everything else simply isn't going to matter. Uh, so that's kind of where the new climate denialism is starting to play out, as people saying that the climate's going to wait until we do things like sort out the economy or otherwise, which is a completely um, false dynamic or choice or binary anyway, uh, because the economy is simply how we choose to invest resources and the transactions that occur between players or individuals within the economy. Uh, it is a man-made construct and therefore we can orient it entirely to exist within planetary boundaries. 
Um, Hazel is saying um, Paige's new track Yellow is Rad Awesome mental health related song Keldon, thank you for that recommendation Oh, there's quite a few good recommendations in here um, Brad is saying um, Talking about the importance of changing the way that we interact with each other in the planet Kia absolutely agree with that uh, Oh, there's so many good recommendations in here Oh, Kathy recommending Miss June Oh, guys, my dad's going to hate it, but my dad's tuning in. Hey, Paul. Hey, Dad. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Caleb talking about um, a surprise around the lack of public transit in cities. Um, using less energy, including renewable energy, it has cost the environment. Kia ora, Peter. Um, we've also got Isabella um, Lenny Han Eichen, uh, who's tuning in. Isabella is the president of New Zealand University Students Association. We've been working closely together uh, to do everything that we can to ensure that the next student support package is meaningful and doesn't pile more debt as a chain around the neck of students walking into the future. Uh, education is a passport, folks. Uh, it is something that enables all of us greater mobility and opportunity for the future. And I personally find fundamentally believe that it is the right of all citizens. All of us have a better life when all of us have access to education and the ability to uh, build a better society through collaboration and using each other's skills. Uh, I just want to briefly touch on, um, before we sign off for the day, uh, the fact that whilst Parliament is back for um, me in a certain form, as I've been having every other day with select committees, um, hence you know the button-down shirt today, uh, we also have Parliament back next week. Uh, so continue thinking about the kind of ways that you'd like to become politically engaged. Uh, tonight we've also got James Shaw, our co-leader, who I've been talking about, who's written to the Independent Climate Commission, uh, who is... Um, hosting with Marama Davidson, our other co-leader, uh, and our spokesperson on housing, Māori issues, uh, regional development, and a raft of other things. Uh, both of them are hosting a town hall um, with my mate Tamitha Paul, uh, who is a councillor for Wellington, uh, and with uh, Ganesh, I've forgotten his last name off the top of my head, isn't it, poor form, uh, but an economist uh, from Bill, who is also a key advisor on, or panellist rather, on the Welfare Expert, Expert Advisory Group. Uh, and that's us. Uh, I hope that you all have a wonderful day. We'll see you all again tomorrow at 10 past 8. Uh, this is Gina Keel behind me. And for those of you who have just tuned in, remember to support your local artists who um, I'm sure we all are now recognising we absolutely couldn't live without as we are in isolation and you know we're watching films or TV shows and we're reading books and we're listening to music. Our creatives are important, not just in a pandemic, but all the time. Make sure that you support them um, when all of this is over, please. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 past 8. Remember to stay home, save lives and be kind, especially to yourselves. We'll catch you.